Hello once again everyone. We meet Faros here at the top of Brightstone Cove Seldora, about to make the final run of the area and have a last little duel with the Duke's dear Freya. These two seem to be going at it and I think I'm gonna help Pate in this one. Creighton's going to give me his full set of armor, and while I don't think any of it's going to be too useful for the character I'm running, I think it'll be more likely to be useful than uh, what Creighton's reward would be. There we go. That's the Seldora Den Key, which is going to get me the engraved gauntlets. And now I can kill Creighton. It's a little bit scummy, but <laughs> I don't really care. It's just free souls and a bonus mask in case, I don't know, I, I want to give it to somebody. It's There's no real reason you would ever need to, but I want it anyways. That allows me to come right on through. Have I already cleared everything here? I believe I have. Okay, then. Oh, but I still have that Titanite to pick up. Nice little chunk for me. I'm pretty sure that I'm almost done with all of these weapons, so that sh Titanite chunk shouldn't come in handy for quite some time. Clear all these guys out. I did... how did I grab the Ritual Band, but not that Titanite? That's weird. We can figure it out later. Come in and just cleave my way through these spiders. Very easy to kill if you have a great weapon like this. I actually want to save the durability on that axe for facing Freya herself. Come on around. Just clearing this whole area out before I turn to take on the uh, den over there. Just so that I don't have to worry about... Oh, goodness. Let's, let's fix that. So that I don't have to worry about anything sneaking up on me while I'm working. I don't think that the bow can actually break this unless you're using iron arrows, and I don't want to bother, so I'll just take the hit. You do want to fully Estus up before you open this, because if you do get hit, it will take off a big chunk of your life. <coughs> There's the Seldora Denki. The engraved gauntlets are actually untrapped. You can just pick those up, but right next to them you've got... 10 rusted coins that you might want and of course I want and you kinda have to deal with the bomb to get. Rolling away should be able to get you out of the explosion but I've had it not work sometimes so I don't know exactly what's going on with that. I think it might have to do with the exact direction you roll in but I'm uncertain. Anyways that's most of Seldora already handled. I can come right on through to the boss chamber now and that's going to be it for this whole area. After this, we're going to be heading on to Sholva. I like to face Sholva before I enter Dranglet Castle, and I like to complete the Iron Crown DLC bef right after I pick up the uh, Ashen Mist Heart in order to actually head into the uh, memory of Suralon. That way I can clear the entire DLC in one go, and I think that's how it's meant to be played, honestly. You can head back and uh, spend some of your souls, but I don't honestly think that's too necessary usually. And I, I just enjoy the experience of heading all the way through and really just keeping that whole experience together. Oh, I didn't actually enter this chamber to loot all of it? That's funny. But I'm here now, so I can grab everything as I head my way down. bunch of nice drops. I need to just come right all the way to the bottom. No hassle whatsoever. The Bastard Sword, of course, has its lovely sweeping move that's really good for taking on these lightly armored spiders. They don't really pose any threat right now unless they get a little bit predictive or I get cut out in one of my swings, so I should be pretty okay. You don't want to get surrounded. That will be the death of you here because they can sort of store up their hit until right after you're vulnerable and can do quite horrible things to you, to be honest. 
There are a few bits of loot around that you want to pick up while you're making your way through, but other than that, it's a pretty straight on drop right on down to the bottom. Come over here and grab this, and you're ready to face the Duke's Dear Freya. I am going to keep... You know, first I want to check. Can I one-shot the spider? Oh, glorious. That means it's going to be quite the easy trick to clear out all these spiders in the very beginning of the boss fight. The faster you take all of them on, the faster you can actually focus on Freya herself. And if you do take out all the first little spiders here, it makes you much safer for the rest of the boss fight. So I would highly recommend it to anyone who has the capacity. Whether it's from using a bow like I did, or if you've got sorceries or hexes, even lightning bolts, since they've been nerfed, that's really all they're good for at this point. So there's a lot of ways to take them out, but it's definitely something you want to do. Come in with my massive weapon, just whack her across the face once or twice. The damage is just absolutely amazing. She locks herself into really long animations, which is great. Sadly, her armored carapace can get in the way more often than not. There we go. And on her magic attack, the back head actually gets very high for the first little bit, so it can be a moment before you actually have the ability to hit it. Don't want to get hit with that. That usually follows up with a magic attack that's going to hit you with startling accuracy, especially since you can't roll or run away from it, so definitely something you want to avoid, but that's that whole fight. Now it's just the Duke Seldora himself and the body of Vengarl, and we're pretty much good to head on to Shulva. Great Axe does not care about his Seldora set. It's incredibly weak armor. It's really only useful for the utility of bonus souls, which I highly rate, but I'm loath to kill merchants, so I rarely use it from the start. Grab that, and we're ready to Primal Bonfire out. It is possible that the third and final DLC is going to show up either here in Seldora or over in the Lost Sinners Primal Bonfire room, but I really don't expect that to be the case. At this point, it's almost certainly going to be found in the Shrine of Winter itself, and I'm pretty okay with that. Let's see, I want to be getting all my stats up fairly evenly. Let's get my stamina maxed first. Stamina is the most useful stat in my opinion. There we go, and onwards to Shulva. That was a really nice quick clear. Grabbed all the odds and ends that I'd left behind, and now we're ready to face the sunken city. The Great Axe should be able to make very nice work of the hollows here, so that should be pretty okay. Yep, at this point it can still get a two shot on them, which is the ideal timing to be coming into Shulva, is if you have a weapon that can two shot the hollows here, because if you have to do a three shot you sometimes can't get the full combo off before they actually have a chance to respond and so if you don't have a stagger which is quite likely considering the incredibly high poise of these hollow soldiers it can be a rather difficult situation to be in or you could just trade hits anyways and be silly about it but generally speaking you don't want to be doing that parry that I like to save the durability on my actual weapons, especially because these first areas are fairly long. I am glad that I actually have a fully upgraded short bow to be coming here with, as sometimes the range damage can be nice, and it will actually mean I can fully clear the little lizard statue beings that can be so annoying. Bait him out. Ah, thought I had the timing on that, but turns out I was just a smidge too short. Goodness, I keep going for the trade hits when I really shouldn't be. Gonna need to watch that as I clear through the rest of this place. Is that everybody up here? I believe so. Means I can Estesan up 
and get my short bow out to start plinking away at the guys down there. Considering the fact that my great axe kills them in two hits, I don't think it necessary to cheese them with range, but still having the short bow is nice for triggering all the uh, little triggers that dotted around the level. It's nice that they give you a plunge attack. As I've said before, I like taking advantage of those when they give them to me. Let's see if I can stagger on a jumping attack. No, this was this was terrible. I don't know how he missed, but I'll take it. Because I really played that encounter poorly. Don't know what was going on there. Oh. I meant to Estus and then equip my poison throwing knives because they're quite useful for taking on that hanging bug. Come on through. A pair of these guys are going to aggro at me, but I can make short work of them. Ooh, take an arrow to the back. was not expecting that. You want to use a throwing knife here as opposed to a bow and arrow because it actually won't, a bow and arrow, generally speaking, won't stagger those bugs, and so it won't fall to its death if you just plank it with an arrow once. It's the best way to be conserving ammunition, especially since a single throwing knife is cheaper than several arrows. Nice little poison bite ring. I might actually consider the Sanctum Mace on this character. It doesn't really seem to fit the quality build, but there are going to be a few weapons that I pick up that aren't full quality, so it might just see some use. Oh, come on. Where was my backstab? If you're going to be taking a hit, you might as well be blocking it. Less damage is better than full damage. Even if it is at the cost of a little bit of stamina regeneration. Oh, where is my backstabs? What is this? At least he didn't get a hit off me, but still. This is just getting downright silly. Usually backstabs are the easiest way to take these guys on. And it just seems like it does not want to give them to me today. And no matter. That's everything to be done here. Can head on into the bug chamber now. Let's see what the bastard sword does to them. I think I can still get a one hit on them, but I'm not quite certain. So I want to try that out before I head on. Immediately come over and grab the Elizabeth mushroom and then turn and fight. Okay, the strong attack will do it. The weak attack as well. Okay. That is really good to see. I thought I was taking a little bit more equipment damage than I was, so I just wanted to check and see where my rings were at. Okay. Oh. Wrong hand. Get this out, and you can actually shoot them in the face. With certain great weapons, you can actually use the vertical chops or some of the uh, sweeping attacks to hit them from below or try and aim at their tail specifically but if you have a bow and arrow it's just by far the easier way to deal with the issue that's everything here and I can come down and clear this area out now this guy takes a second to pay attention to you so if you want to be quick about it you can just get the oh my character didn't parry that's silly Maybe there's something going wrong with my controller, because I am having a few problems with the inputs right now. Don't know what that's about, but if it persists, I might actually cut this episode early. Immediately knock this up. You don't want to be dealing with the arrow fire, but turns out it doesn't matter. Take care. Oh, goodness. Well, Shulva is kicking my butt fairly nicely thus far. It's rather annoying, but... I should be able to pull it out of my hat either way. Follow this along to grab the free Sanctum Mace, as opposed to hoping for a drop from one of these soldiers here in the level. And now it's time to equip my bow. I've got three triggers to hit before I do anything else. That one, that one, and this little bit of cover here. There we go. 
you immediately want to be rolling after you make those shots because you will be facing incoming fire and so you want to be mitigating as much of that as possible oh god I regret everything there we go these soldiers really do leave themselves just hanging open for the backstabs but sometimes it doesn't want to give them to you so you just kinda gotta take whatever you can grab the titanite and then come around for the backstab that should save you as much hassle as possible from these two archers one of them's going in melee perfect I can take him out in my leisure there we go what gosh there we go come on oh for goodness sake Let's just have done with it. Took so many hits in this clear. It's very, very out of character for myself. Knock up that last platform. And now we can head on down here to the, quote, secret area. Immediately plink that, and up we go. It is a very well hidden secret, and I can't imagine how most people would find it if they didn't know it was there. There we go. But then again, that is one of the best parts about the internet, is that nothing remains a secret for long. Everyone can share all their information, and soon enough, things just become ubiquitous. There we go. It's nice to be able to finish that off without a hassle because usually it takes quite a bit of tricky jumping and rolling to head on through here without getting poisoned. A full stamina bar is usually enough to kill him depending upon what weapon you're using, but if you're using a very heavy weapon like this then sometimes it's just not quite enough. As I've already said, this the Lion Great Axe is mainly for the stagger rather than the sheer damage numbers as you could probably get something a little bit better if you're going pure strength with say the Gurm Great Axe but I am not so I will take what I can get I've raised all four of these platforms so I can have a nice little jog on over to the bonfire but before you actually rest there you want to make sure that you try and get the two drops down below on the actual pillar there so you can come on around knock this down once again and for this I like to equip a ring of life protection because the jumps on these platforms can be kind of dodgy but yeah you can see what I mean you can get the jump but occasionally it has that problem where you jump a little bit too close to the edge or just not in the right fashion and so it actually sucks you down a little bit dropping your elevation below what is necessary to clear that little minuscule gap there so it's a bit frustrating but you can immediately fall right back down and give it a retry and if you have been using your life protection rings then it's no big deal to just do that over and over again since the platform's already here, I can just drop right on down, and that's the jump I was looking for. This is another tricky jump, but I make it, so no big deal. Let's see if this will do it. It will not. Oh, get the trade hit. That's sad. Hmm. I wonder if he could just fall off the edge if I parried him in the right location. Oh, dual sanctum mace. Yeah, that is not happening. That is, that is not a thing that we are doing. Knock this, immediately hop on, and enjoy the ride. Usually that jump is a little bit easier just because the uh, platform is getting the elevation for you, so you don't have to worry about the drop too terribly much. And with that, I can re-equip my ring of blades as the sun up and continue with the level because that's a full clear of that area 
I'm going to leave those rusted coins in there for a little bit later. I will come through there, actually as one of the last things I do in Shulva. I like to save that section for last just because the first section just follows so naturally from itself. As you can see, Sin was a deer and cleared this bridge for us, but it's not too big of a deal to just slip on past them, especially if you can stagger them out so that you can dash in between them at one point. Those are really nice, but here we come with the introduction of this mechanic. Again, the first time I was going through here, I actually didn't learn about this mechanic until much later. Just because I had an elemental weapon, and I actually killed both these ghosts before killing the corpses. So, I never actually learned what they were trying to teach you with this encounter. Which I don't really hold against them. It is fairly obvious that you're supposed to do something to the uh, bodies, but at the same time, it's not perfectly clear. Like, there is still room for misinterpretation. Oh, Sanctum Knight Armor. That's nice. It's always sad when they drop their helm, just because you get a guaranteed drop of that later in the level, so it's kind of a waste. Armor is one of those weird items that you really don't need duplicates of. There's, there's no point in getting duplicates other than handing it out to friends, trading it away, or just bragging, since you're always going to use the best upgraded version. There's no downside to it, and the chances of your armor actually breaking are extremely low. And even then, you'd rather just head to a blacksmith and repair the already upgraded version. Come on around. Getting the backstabs on these poison ones does get you a little bit of poison damage onto yourself, but it's, generally speaking, worth the one shot. I managed to avoid triggering that, which means I can get an instant kill on this guy, and this guy as well, if he takes long enough. Bingo. Tag this so that I can get my massive drop over there. Open the chest while I wait. This is a really nice area, I think, just because it's so easy to grab everything all at once. It's a very direct clear. There's a bunch of chests, a bunch of great loot, and you can just grab everything immediately. It doesn't bother wasting your time like some are other areas in the game. Oh, what was that? <laughs> Come on. Now you're just being unfair. Oh, dear. Just want to get that last little bit of damage on her so I can focus my efforts. Oh, come on! You can, you can see I'm clearly getting robbed of these backstabs. But it's no big deal. I still get the kill. I get the Sanctum Soldier Gauntlets, which are going to be key on this character if I actually set up a poison build, which is kind of ideal on this character. Pharos has all the stats really needed to make a really nice poison build, whether it's going to be the rat ring and the sanctum gauntlets with old whips or whatever I eventually end up going with. Poison build is definitely a possibility in the future. It really fits the theme. You want to tag that as well as this one up here just to be uh, efficient with your time because otherwise you won't be able to grab the puzzling sword until you come back out. Okay, and they give me that backstab. I really just think that the game is messing with me at this point. It's just being silly. Come on around here. I always abuse this mechanic just because it's meant to kill the player so why not use it against the enemies? No. No you don't. And there's a ton of loot down here. It's absolutely fantastic. The DLCs are both great for giving you really, really nice bits of loot. Like, look at that. Three Twinkling, three Petrified. It's, who can complain about that? Come on over here, a Puzzling Sword. Really fun, unique weapon that they don't make you farm enemies to death to get. Looking at you. The Smelter Hammer and anything by the Fume Sorcerers ever. Not to mention the Ashen Warrior Sword. Goodness. That thing is just the dickens. But yeah, just a, no a lot of nice things. If you're a cleric, you especially want to head down there 
to grab the bolt stone, though the uh, fire drake stone is generally not as useful even if you are running a pyromancer. Get some free pot shots down at these guys since I'm at elevation, but eventually I'm gonna have to head on down there, so let's get some fall reduction. There we go. Immediately just start clearing this. You have, you've got two real options. You can start fighting your way through, or you can immediately bail and try... Oh, is that not enough to kill them? Oh, that's terrible. Okay, new strategy. We're gonna bail. Oh dear. You can't immediately start running up the stairs and just bail out on the entire encounter. And since that seems to be what we're doing, let's just make sure we don't have to deal with any of that corrosion. I hate corrosion with a passion, especially because durability is such an important stat on longer clears like I'm going to be facing here. So I really want to save as much weapon durability on my great sword and great axe as possible. It is kind of using a lot of arrows, but that's what I picked them up for. I knew that I was going to be wanting some range damage, and this is the perfect area to put it into place, especially because melee will actually get your weapons broken quite quickly. Not to mention the rest of your equipment if you happen to break any of these pods. Really just nasty enemies. I do like their design in that they kind of force you to either sacrifice yourself in melee combat, or immediately just break away and fight from distance, but they are a bit frustrating to deal with, just because I hate having things broken. Drop on down, and we're right back on the stairs, to right, drop right back down again. Let's see, what's this short bow at? Seven? That's pretty nice. Now, this sorceress while fairly resistant to range damage, is incredibly annoying, as I have learned on several of my other characters, in that she has a penchant for tagging you with her horrible little dark spells as you're... Oh, ouch. As you're heading up this ladder here, which quite often ends up in you taking enough stamina damage to knock you down into the spikes and the waiting enemies below. It's a very, very cruel way they set that up, especially since your best bet is to just run right on through. You always want to kill her. I personally like to tag this before I head on over, but after that your best bet is to drop down and grab this chest, because this guy is going to drop down and you can head to the crypt on your lonesome. Occasionally, he even drops down after trying to follow you down to the chest, but sadly that didn't happen this time. I do want to lock him up into an attack animation so I can make my way up the... Oh, dear. That was exactly what I was trying to avoid, so now I get to kite as I try to heal. And is this safe? Yes, it is. There we go. This should drag them over to this side which means that I'm much safer as I try out this bid for the ladder here, but if you're not running any sort of elemental attacks, then they can just be the absolute dickens to deal with, just because you have no answer to them. I could waste a ton of arrows, but honestly, your best bet, I would say, is just to avoid them altogether. There you go. And now, we actually are going to well, first off, grab this and avoid the trap, but we're going to head down into the crypt so we can disable... Oh, what? What? I was... The effect wasn't even touching me. That's silly. But now we're going to head into their crypt so that we can actually make them vulnerable again. Because there is nothing more annoying than an invulnerable enemy. Another round of kiting with these guys, just as you head around and try and break all these statues. I found that fist weapons or parrying work best because 
rolling, which is another fairly okay option, actually takes quite a bit of stamina. And oh god. You do have to be a bit precise with it. That is the one downside. But rolling takes a bit more stamina and can lock you into the roll animation longer than you want to be. It's going to make space and heal up. Uh, now they're all gathered down there. I can get him in one hit if I get the backstab, but that is key to the whole affair. I have to make him vulnerable to the backstab in order for that to work. As they're switching weapons, they're extremely vulnerable. So that is your cue to head in. Oh dear. Oh dear. These ha this hallway can be just an absolute death trap if they follow you up, but usually they don't, so I don't know what their malfunction is right now. I've actually got almost all their armor. That's really cool. If I can just get their repeater crossbow and their gauntlets, I'll actually have their full set. Since their regular crossbow will drop fairly shortly onwards and uh, goodness that their falcons can just be picked up at any sort of merchant oh she actually dropped something how nice of her that's actually fairly rare only a dragon charm but it had the possibility of being something nice okay like I said best choice is to immediately get a backstab so let's drop down and get it done Luckily, that fellow over there is fairly dedicated to his whole ranged affair, so he gives you a little bit to diddle his friends. There we go. That's them taken care of. Uh, I've got three helms if anybody needs them. <laughs> Not like anyone would, considering you get a guaranteed one in that other room, but... Oh, well. Grab all this up gonna trigger this all that's left is to kill the knight down there activate the bonfire and grab the two last little bits of loot here and that's gonna be it thank you very much come in for the next step and just crush him plank only gonna need one more arrow and I'll be good Oh, let's grab the dragon, uh, dragon stone? Is it? What is it? Yeah, the dragon stone while we're here. <laughs> Sounds like something out of Pokemon now that I think about it. But grab that and head on up. We've got this last little shot right here. And that has come full circle. Hop on down to grab denial. It's a fairly nice miracle. It can catch certain builds off guard, especially if they're focused on critting you. If you pair that with something like Great Heal Excerpt, then you can get quite the uh, little swing in since after they crit you the first time, they're probably expecting you to just die off the cusp. That is everything? Grab my Sanctum Crossbow which is probably going to be nice later in the game when I actually have some dark built up. And that's all. Thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next episode.